Ira? Oh, of course. You and Glenda were in the bed above me. <laughs> Seems like old times. Columbia Plaza, Warner West End now. No deposit finance. Nothing to pay till April. Ring 464-6575 now. Tonight at 8.20, Trevor Howard and Celia Johnson star in Staying On, Paul Scott's classic tale of an elderly couple left behind in a changing India. What a shower. If we drink up all our nice broth and then have a good sleep this afternoon, who knows? It appalls me. What does? A woman of nearly 70 talking like a child of seven. I have no friends. All our friends are your friends, not mine. And, yes, I will say it, they are all black. <sighs> what does it matter about a little bit of grass? My silly, silly Tusker. <laughs> Get on this way together. Each Facing the challenge is staying on tonight at 8.20. The setting for that play might well have appealed to the man who, to whose work a tribute is paid tonight at 10.15, Noel Coward. But now, later than advertised, Dennis Norden. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> because Italy and Japan did display a certain ingenuity in extending the frontiers of physical indignity, there were moments, just occasional moments. Un minuto cinquanta cinque. Due, stai fermo con le mani, venticinque. Tre, due, uno, stop, stop, stop. No, cosa fai? Via, 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 via. Quando avrete terminato potrete togliervi il cilindro e a quel punto sapremo chi ha vinto. Chi ha terminato può buttare giù il cilindro? Non fatemela legare. Una, due, il controllo verrà fatto una volta fuori. Una, due, controllo. さあ、<laughs> the kind of shows which bring a whole new freshness to the phrase barely adequate. <laughs> in, in, in a book I was reading while we were researching this doomed venture, somebody said, I'm glad I'm not a foreigner because then I'd have to speak a foreign language and I wouldn't know what I was talking about. <laughs> well, when we came to look at foreign soap operas, the language problems were greatly helped by what you might call the long lingering looks factor. In such warmer climates as, say, Egypt and South America, whenever emotions reach a certain pitch of intensity, they seem to be expressed by deeply significant glances and sudden onsets of background music.
extract from Hamelot. <laughs> but proof that it does help to understand the lingo when emotions get steamy came when we looked through some old episodes of a long-running Australian soap opera classic. Nowhere else in the world did we find so many characters whose love lives appear to be governed by the planet Kinky. Just, I feel so alone, so frightened. Bev, please? For me? Oh, all right then. Just for a minute. <laughs> mm. I feel better already. <laughs> I promise you're not going to worry about anything. Everything's going to be okay. Okay. Nothing. Unless they're pulling 96 down already. <laughs> Silly. Rod, have you seen Bet? Oh, my God, no. <laughs> you want to know something, Harry? You could get arrested for what you just did. <laughs> just couldn't help it. <laughs> Blame me. All I know is you came in like a lion and went out like a lamb. <laughs> Who can I that? Well, one of your freaky pickups, no doubt. You're just jealous. Because they're not infinite like you. What? What did you say? You're impotent. You can't make it. Shut up, will impotent. you? Shut up, for God's sake! Shut up, you hear me? possibly mind there isn't a particle of you that I don't love or or want or, or remember uh, and you really don't mind me not being a girl <laughs> you come up from underneath my bed do you hear me Herb? I'm warning you I'll call the police if you We've come a long way from Emmerdale Farm. <laughs> but that would seem to be an appropriate note to finish on. If you now expect me to draw some cogent conclusions from my round-the-world TV tour, well, I'm afraid the best I can offer is as follows. There appear to be very few Japanese actors called Keith. <laughs> Tibet is somewhat low on situation comedies. <laughs> Iran has no real equivalent of the Kenny Everett show. <laughs> and I didn't find any part of the world where you couldn't come up with the same verdict as you can here. Namely, that no matter how bad the teleprograms may be, they're still better than reality.
New Year's Day on ITV at 6.30 epic film entertainment when Omar Sharif heads an all-star cast in the story of Dr. Zhivago. We've been together six months on the road and here. We've not done anything you'll have to lie about to Tonya. Yes. That's Strelnikov. Dr. Shivago at 6.30. Later at 10.20, we join Wood and Waters. This is our orchestra. Or to give them their correct technical title, the lads. They were assembled in the usual fashion with me hanging out of an upstairs window in Soho in a half-cup bra with a megaphone. I'm surprised I haven't read about you in the papers. Oh, I've had my fair share of publicity. Really? Oh, yes, been a bridesmaid twice. Blue chiffon with trumpet sleeves, mauve taffeta with pin-tucked bodice. And I've been mugged. Really? <laughs> Badly? Oh, no, I think he did his best. At 10.50, Elaine Stritch is involved with mysterious Christmas spirits. Does she know what you've got laid on for her on Christmas Eve? Not yet, no. Now, if you'll take my advice, you'll settle yourself in front of the fire with a good book. Mr. and Mrs. Antry will be back soon. Elaine Stritch, haunted by Christmas spirits. Part of an entertaining lineup, New Year's Day on ITV. Next, a postscript to the story of the British Raj in Staying On.